Ladies and gentlemen, what we have seen already in these first few minutes that we're all together in this glittering room is how, when we gather, the combination of warm lights, sparkling conversation, fizzing energy, form that combustible mix, otherwise known as a lovely evening. But we gather here tonight, and our bonami is for a much more serious purpose, to discuss what is still one of the main challenges of our time, to stop the proliferation of a far more combustible, more dangerous mix, otherwise known as nuclear weapons. And we meet in the wake of a very precious, a very rare moment in international diplomacy. A moment when there was a major multilateral deal on a major challenge of our time, a major arms deal without a shot being fired, without it being a zero-sum game. But as we gather tonight, many of us are asking, will the Iran nuclear deal survive? Will it succeed? Or will it continue to be challenged month after month in Tehran, in Washington, in Brussels, and in many other capitals? As we meet, it's already being challenged in Tehran where hardliners are asking why the centrifuges are being disabled. And so tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are very fortunate to have with us the man who describes his agency as the eyes and the ears of the world when it comes to nuclear matters in Iran. And the eyes of the world, our eyes, are on him former diplomat, former lawyer, quiet spoken with a very big voice. His words matter. But the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Yuko Amana, tells us his job is purely technical. To look at the implementation of the deal, the nuts and bolts, the centrifuges, all those things far more complicated than many of us can understand. But for those of us who in June stood for weeks behind a metal barrier in front of the Palais Coburg and asked the question that so many were asking, will there be a deal or will there not? And the deadline in June passed and it moved into July and troubling questions emerged. What about Iran's past research? What about the PMD, the possible military dimensions? Was this going to be a deal breaker? And at this 11th hour, a black limousine quietly slid past the cobbled streets, and a quiet man quietly got out. He went into the palais, and he came out, and he headed to Tehran. 48 hours, he came back, and the headline was, does Amano save the day? Two weeks later, there was a deal. But for Yukio Amano and his team, their work was just beginning. And in New York, in September, when world powers gathered again, and security barriers were put up, to prevent journalists like me approaching the good and the great, I arrived in New York wondering who I would see. And on my first day, I went out of my little room in a big hotel and looked down a long hall, and I saw who would be my first victim. Yukio Omano. <laughs> and he walked down from his end of the hall, and I walked down from my end of the hall. 
no security guards, no press attaches. And we met in the middle by the lift. And in that rare moment, I asked Yukio Amano the question all the world was asking, how are you? <laughs> and he smiled. And then he was stuck with me in the lift for 19 <laughs> floors. But you know what they say in Vegas? What happens in the lift stays in the lift. <laughs> Yukio Amano was stuck with me for a few minutes in the lift. He's going to stick with us for the next hour and more to speak to us and to take our questions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man of the hour, Yuki Omano. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> so. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am very pleased to be with you at this um, EU Non-Proliferation Consortium event. As you all know, the IAEA helps to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons by implementing safeguards to verify that all nuclear material and activities in a country are in peaceful purposes. We also help to make nuclear science and technology available to generate electricity, improve human and animal health, increase food production, and much more. This is an extremely important part of our work and it deserves more attention than it generally gets. We are now saying the objective of the IAEA is to, add, to use atoms for peace and development. There are many interesting stories, and I would like to talk about that. But I understand uh, that nuclear verification is the main focus of interest this evening. So let me begin by giving you a little history of IAEA's role in Iran and nuclear issue. When I became Director General in December 2009, Iran had already been on IAEA's agenda for seven years. The agency was reporting to our Board of Governors on a quarterly basis about the efforts of our inspectors to establish what exactly had been going on. The level of cooperation provided by Iran throughout these years was variable, but it was never sufficient to address international concerns. I am very a systematic person, and I like to work from first principles. Right from the start of my report, my term, I stressed the fundamental principle that all safeguards agreements between the IAEA and member states should be implemented fully. So should other relevant obligations, such as resolution of the United Nations Security Council. This is a very simple principle, but a very important one. I felt that spelling out the issues with clarity was an essential first step towards resolving the problems concerning Iran's nuclear activities. My quarter reports to the IAEA Board of Governors from 2010 onwards stated that nuclear material declared to the agency by Iran was not being diverted from peaceful purposes. But I also stated that Iran was not providing sufficient cooperation to enable the agency to conclude that all nuclear material in Iran was in peaceful activities. I urge Iran to implement the additional protocol to its safeguards agreement with the agency. Additional protocol is a very powerful verification tool that gives the agency additional access to information and sites in the country concerned. I also urge Iran to clarify the issues 
relating to what had become known as possible military dimensions to its nuclear program. So implementing the additional protocol and clarifying uh, the issues with possible military dimension has been two important elements in addressing uh, this Iran nuclear issue. <clears throat> in November 2011, I presented a detailed report to our Board of Governors and identified 12 areas of concern. I stated that information obtained by the agency indicated that Iran had carried out activities relevant to the development of nuclear explosive device. The information also indicated that before the end of 2003, these activities had taken place under a structured program and that some activities might still be ongoing. I stated that the information assembled by the agency was overall credible. It was consistent in terms of technical content, individuals and organizations involved, and time frames. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be clear. I did not say that Iran had nuclear weapons. I did not even um, draw any conclusion at that time. But I say, did say that Iran had a case to answer. In response to my report, the IAEA Board of Governors adopted a resolution urging Iran and the agency to intensify their dialogue, aiming at the urgent resolution of all outstanding substantive issues. The Board of Governors also called on Iran uh, to engage seriously and without preconditions in talks aimed at restoring international confidence in the exclusively peaceful nature of its nuclear program. Two years of talks between the agency and Iran followed. However, virtually no progress was made. At that time, we were going around in circles. Around September 2013, we started to some changes and movements. A very important dialogue between Iran and the so-called P5 plus one or E3 plus three countries, which agreed a joint plan of action in late 2013. The seven countries asked the IAEA to undertake monitoring and verification of nuclear-related measures to be implemented by Iran. Just before the agreement, Iran and the IAEA signed a framework for cooperation. The basic objective was to resolve all outstanding issues, past and present, through strengthened cooperation and a step-by-step -step approach. The two separate strands of negotiations continued between Iran and the P5 plus one countries on one hand and between Iran and agency on the other. The IAEA was not party to the talks between Iran and the six countries, but we did provide technical support and advice. Then in July 2015, Iran and six countries agreed a joint comprehensive plan of action the Security Council asked the IAEA to undertake verification and monitoring of Iran's nuclear-related commitments under the JCPOA, and our board authorized us to do so. The Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action stated that Iran would implement the additional protocol. This is an essential prerequisite for the agency to be able to provide credible assurance about the absence of undeclared nuclear material and activities in Iran. Iran also agreed under the JCPOA to implement a number of additional transparency measures, including enhanced access to uranium mines and mills and continuous surveillance of centrifuge manufacturing plants. These measures go beyond the scope of the additional protocol and will help the agency to better understand Iran's nuclear activities. Just before the JCPOA was agreed in July, I signed a roadmap with Iran for the clarification of uh, the possible military dimensions 
to Iran's nuclear program. This is the result of my visit uh, to Tehran on the 2nd of July. The purpose of the roadmap was to accelerate and strengthen the cooperation and dialogue between the agency and Iran with a view to resolving all outstanding issues by the end of 2015. In September, I traveled to Iran for high-level meetings with Iran, the Iranian leaders. I also visited a location of interest at a particular site of Pachin to which the agency had long been requesting access. Deputy Director General Tero Vajaranta and I entered the building which the agency had previously only been able to observe using satellite imagery. Environmental samples were also taken at Parchin and sent to the IAEA specialist laboratories in Cybersoft. Ladies and gentlemen, last month I informed our member states uh, that activities set out in the roadmap between Iran and the agency had been completed by the deadline of October 15th. We are finalizing our analysis of all of the information at our disposal. I will present my final assessment on all past and present outstanding issues to our Board of Governors by December 15th. The IAEA is a technical organization and our job is to establish the facts to the best of our ability. My report will be factual, objective, and impartial. It is up to our member states to determine uh, the appropriate response. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a number of observations on the whole process. The first is that even complex and challenging issues can be tackled effectively if all parties are committed to dialogue, not dialogue for its own sake, but dialogue aimed at achieving results. In the case of Iran, the key players did their jobs and stayed the course. The sustained efforts of the IAEA, the P5 plus one countries, the United Nations Security Council, and of course Iran itself have got us to where we are today. My second observation is that the IAEA was able to make a vital contribution by sticking to its technical mandate and not straying into politics. The agency has some faced criticism from many quarters. Not all of it is fair. We have been accused both of being too tough on Iran and of being too accommodating. That suggests to me that we have probably got it about right. By sticking, by sticking to the facts and our technical mandate, we retained the confidence of all sides. The agency has top class technical experts, considerable experience, and a range of high tech equipment. I have con full confidence in myself. Ladies and gentlemen, the IAEA will continue to implement safeguards in Iran with a view to being able to draw what we call the broader conclusion that all nuclear material remains in peaceful activities in due course. The agreement reached in July represent a clear net gain for the IAEA from the verification point of view. The combination of a comprehensive safeguards agreement with Iran, the additional protocol, and the transparency measures agreed in the joint comprehensive plan of action enhances our capability to verify the nature of Iran's nuclear activities. Much work lies ahead of us, but we have the expertise and experience to do the job. The IAEA will remain the eyes and ears of the international community on nuclear matters in Iran. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for sharing with us. Um, you get a, a sense of the magnitude of his task, even though he's got his usual 
perhaps in a very you know, quiet, uh, unass unassuming way, but just if you could just, uh, we appreciate that some of it is still confidential and you never know, there might be a journalist here, so you have to be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but the, your deadline is December the 15th for this report on the possible military dimensions. It's a crucial road uh, plan, it's a crucial part of the roadmap. It will reassure other states around the world that Iran is committed to a nu uh, peaceful nuclear program. Are you getting the cooperation that you feel is necessary? Are you confident you'll have everything you need in time? Um, we signed uh, the agreement uh, with Iran roadmap um, uh, in, on the 15th of um, July. And some, uh, all the promises, commitments made by Iran have been implemented. Uh, that's why uh, we stated uh, that uh, the activities on the ground have uh, been completed uh, by the 15th of, um, uh, of October. Uh, the remaining uh, work is uh, to uh, have uh, the wrap-up meeting uh, with Iran uh, very shortly in the near future. And uh, we are analyzing uh, the information that we collected. And um, uh, um, uh, we are very confident uh, that uh, we can release uh, the report uh, on time. And these reports now coming from Tehran, where some of the hardliners are pushing back and saying at Natanz and Ferdo, two of the main nuclear power plants, that they should stop taking out uh, centrifuges. Do you see this as par for the course, or is this an unexpected obstruction, uh, complication? Uh, we have from, um, uh, we are doing two things. Uh, one is um, uh, the clarification of um, uh, past and present issues, and uh, we are making progress, and we are at the final stage. Um, another um, uh, work that we are doing uh, is uh, to prepare, uh, the, uh, prepare for uh, the implementation day. It means uh, that Iran implement uh, the, um, or undertake uh, the preparatory steps and once Iran completes uh, the, um, um, complete uh, to undertake uh, the preparatory step steps, the IAEA is expected uh, to uh, provide uh, the report uh, to the, ex uh, the um, effect that all the activities have been completed. Uh, what you mentioned is related uh, to uh, the, uh, the preparatory steps uh, that uh, Iran is expected to take. Um, we are working in Iran, and uh, we are observing uh, that Iran is um, uh, taking these uh, preparatory steps um, um, at a quite um, uh, high pace. They are implementing these measures, uh, but um, uh, um, it takes time uh, from technical reason and others and um, we are observing it. And so once uh, these activities are completed, uh, we'll um, uh, provide uh, the a report that every step is taken. I think we can take a few questions from the floor. Mark is jumping in, taking the privilege <coughs> of the floor. Um. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Director General Mano. You referred to uh, some criticism, and my question is not meant to pile on this criticism, but only to um, elucidate. The visit to Parchin uh, came with certain restrictions, even though you were able to adequately uh, verify. But the question is whether these restrictions set a precedent for future IAEA access to any other questionable, uh, suspicious sites. You um, uh, may refer uh, to the sample taking um, um, and some um, uh, this process. The um, sample process um, uh, taking is a very complex uh, process. Uh, the sample, uh, process, sample taking uh, must be done um, uh, in accordance with um, uh, the uh, document uh, that we establish. Uh, it must be uh, tested. Uh, those people who take our uh, sample uh, should be trained. Uh, the uh, spots where samples should be taken must be determined uh, in advance um, uh, and need to meet our requirements. Equipments, uh, 
also need to, uh, to be tested. And um, um, uh, uh, we do that uh, under responsibility. Uh, the process uh, should be um, uh, reviewed uh, by peers and agreed. Uh, the chain of custody must be established. Um, these are some of the examples, uh, but um, um, sample taking uh, is a long process and a, com a complex process, and it uh, consists of more than 10 elements. And um, uh, uh, the, uh, sample taking that, uh, that was uh, quite often discussed is uh, what we call swiping, swiping to do, to do like this. Um, and it happens uh, that um, uh, member states participate and some um, sample taking or swiping um, uh, can be done uh, by uh, the uh, member states uh, in a number of cases uh, under the continuous uh, surveillance um, uh, by us. Uh, in fact, we do um, uh, accept uh, the participation by member states uh, in around 40 countries. Uh, so it is not an exceptional case. Um, um, the, um, the way of taking samples varies uh, depending on the site and depending on the situation. Uh, uh, um, uh, this is how uh, we do our job. And um, a very important thing is uh, that process um, uh, must be, um, uh, must be uh, integral and sample must be authentic and uh, must be authenticated by the agency. Uh, uh, these are the important elements for us, and uh, we um, implement sample taking, uh, uh, responding uh, to uh, the specific situation. And, and there are many cases, many different cases, to address uh, the specific uh, uh, case. It's obviously a very sensitive, sensitive yes. process, but do you think the sensitivity will get in the way of the swipes? Well, um, um, uh, we have um, uh, uh, we have uh, the samples, and we are analyzing on uh, the process uh, that was um, uh, applied in Iran uh, is um, uh, has the integrity, and uh, 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 the samples are authentic. So we we don't have any doubt, and uh, we are very confident uh, that uh, we have followed uh, the right process. Thank you. There's a hand over here. No. And there's a hand here too, okay. And in the back, okay. There's, there's a, just one second. Uh, there's a gentleman with a lovely okay. black glasses Thank you very much. here. <laughs> okay, if you could okay, identify uh, yourself, yes. I'm very happy to ask this question to Mr. the General uh, Director of the IA. I'm Professor Lafin from Morocco. Uh, my question is the following one. Uh, can we say with the Iranian deal that uh, the IAEA, the International Agency, the International Atomic Energy uh, <coughs> Agency, is born again from the ashes? Because one time uh, we was in um, a difficult situation because we have um, <coughs> tried the counter uh, proliferation, as you know, and we have tried before the Iran deal you know, the cyber war with uh, the stank, stacks, net, and flame. And now, can we say that uh, this Iran deal give hopes to the international community, and in other way, put another way, can we say that we assist, you know, uh, anew to the, reha to the rehabilitation of the International Atomic Energy Agency? I thank you very much. I think this is a, an affirmation that um, that the agency itself can carry out its work, and you don't have to go to cyber warfare. You don't have to use other elements to try to stop the Iran nuclear program. Mm. Mm. We are um, the technical organization tasked uh, to verify uh, whether uh, the uh, nuclear material um, uh, is um, uh, diverted uh, for uh, purposes other than a uh, peaceful uh, peaceful one. Um, uh, as well as uh, the facilities. Um, some, um, uh, we have heard a number of things, uh, but uh, we are focusing on uh, verifying um, on the peaceful nature of um, uh, nuclear activities and use of um, nuclear materials. In other words, it's, it has been, um, it's, I think you wanted to see this rehabilitate, it's an affirmation of the importance of your agency 
and what you tried to do in terms of a peaceful, a peaceful process. Yes. Hmm. And we have more questions than time, so I'm just going to take a few. There's a gentleman here, and there's Thank here, and then at this table, almost the whole table wants to talk. Um, Thank you. I'm James Acton from the Carnegie Endowment. Uh, Mr. Director General, I, I want to ask you a bit about what the IAEA hopes to achieve, hopes to understand through the investigation into the possible military dimension of Iran's program. Specifically, do you hope to understand what Iran did, or do you hope to understand why Iran did what it did? In other words, do you seek to understand Iranian motivations for these activities or merely what these activities consisted of? The, um, again, uh, the <laughs> IAEA is a technical organization <laughs> and we focus on facts. Uh, we focus on facts and we focus on technology and we, we focus on, um, on, on the facts. We are not, um, um, uh, the objective of our organization is not verify the intention. It is not possible to, uh, to verify the, in, in, uh, the intention in the past and in the future. This is not our job. And uh, we are focused on the fact, why do they have uh, this um, uh, uh, technology? Um, and uh, what is this technology? Um, how can this be used? Uh, we are focusing on, on the uh, technical aspect. What is the political motivation? What uh, they had in mind? This is, some, uh, uh, this is not um, uh, um, uh, the technology. Do you appreciate, Mr. Romano, that most of us come from professions where we believe the devil is in the detail? <laughs> so this, uh, just over, um, this over here, this gentleman here with his hand up. Yes, okay, we're gonna move this way, yes. Thank you. Director General, first of all, let me salute you for the technical work that you're doing. <laughs> I think not only for the technical work, but the way you've reported about your technical work, including tonight. <laughs> Two quick questions. One is I'd asked you, I think in the Carnegie Endowment uh, Conference in April, whether you thought you had the mandate, the resources, and the expertise to fully implement the agreement. And if I don't misquote you, your answer was that you required an enhancement of all three. So first question is whether you actually feel that you now have all three, the mandate, the resource, and the expertise. But the second question is as follows. As you had very technically and precisely recorded, the facility you have visited has considerably changed over the past 10 years. What, and a lot of items are new, a lot of items have been removed over the years, and so on. What would be realistic to expect from the IEA, notwithstanding your fantastic technical capabilities that have improved over time, given all the cleaning up of the facility and changing its nature over the past decade? Thank you. Yeah. First, with respect uh, to um, uh, the mandate, um, before uh, we were not authorized uh, to implement the additional protocol. But um, uh, uh, when JCPOA uh, is implemented, we'll, have, um, uh, we'll be able to implement the additional protocol. This is a big change. Uh, also, um, uh, the JCPOA, um, uh, in the, under the JCPOA, Iran agreed to implement uh, transparency measures. Um, uh, I haven't mentioned in my statement, uh, but um, uh, so-called modified code 3.1 uh, to uh, declare the future activities and plans well in advance will be implemented. So if we compare before and after the JCPOA, there's a clear difference. Um, uh, we have the mandate uh, to implement additional protocol. We will be able uh, to monitor and verify uh, the transparency measures and we'll be able uh, to implement modified code 3.1. Um, these are uh, net gains uh, from a verification point of view. Uh, for uh, the financing, um, we need uh, to raise funds. Um, we have reported to the Board of Governors about, uh, that uh, in order to implement uh, the, these um, activities, 
uh, we have the estimates that we will need 9.2 million uh, euros uh, for each year. It will cover uh, uh, the activities for transparency measures and um, implementation of um, additional protocol. Uh, these um, expenses uh, would be covered by voluntary contribution and um, um, a regular budget. Discussion is now ongoing. For next year, as we could not anticipate this uh, development, all the activities will be implemented by a voluntary contribution, and uh, we are uh, very confident uh, that we can get um, support from member states. Uh, for the um, expertise, uh, we have uh, well-trained um, uh, we have well-trained uh, inspectors, uh, and um, uh, we have uh, the experience. But we will need um, um, more inspectors, and um, in some areas, uh, we will um, uh, need uh, some training. That can be done uh, easily, and uh, so we are confident uh, that uh, we will have the expertise. We now have uh, more mandate, and uh, we are um, confident in uh, the support from member states in fundraising. And the state of the nuclear plants over the last years, things have been taken out and changed. Oh, and yes. Mm -hmm. um, we visited um, uh, the, um, on the site of um, uh, Parchin, and um, uh, the, um, um, we uh, did not uh, see uh, the equipment. Uh, but um, uh, the facility was uh, under uh, modification, and it was an ongoing process and we are now analyzing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, get, we're, we're running out of time a bit, but I'm just going to, I, you all put your hands up together. I'm, I'm taking it like you bought the lottery ticket together, so you all get to give your question. You'll take it as one question from this table. Just, you can pass the microphone around. I think there's three of you, and there's a very energetic lady there who I think, um, but let's just get these last three, and we'll just take that. And I'll make sure that you get, no, no, this, these three, this table here, this table here, and I'm, the lady at the, la no, this, yep, yeah, right here, yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Bob Einhorn from Brookings Institution in Washington. Uh, Director General, you mentioned uh, that the JCPOA provides for monitoring arrangements in Iran that go beyond the additional protocol in a number of respects. Would you welcome the acceptance by other member states uh, of such uh, additional monitoring measures uh, and uh, what do you think the prospects are of creating a kind of uh, new normal, perhaps as a modification of the additional protocol, uh, the acceptance of these um, additional measures by the universe of, uh, of IEA members? The, uh, so let's, uh, we're just going to finish uh, this table. They were yes. discussing amongst yes. themselves. <laughs> so my, mine's a very different question. I'm Patricia Lewis from Chatham House in London. And, um, I'm intrigued in, um, over the years in which you were um, advising, giving technical expertise, uh, you saw a number of quite distinct personalities. And you also saw a number of personnel changes in the negotiations. With your acute observational and analytical skills, Director General, how much did those personality changes impact on the discussions and negotiations, and how much do you think that they contributed in the end to the deal that was done? That's the table. Yes. Okay. Very, just tiny questions. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Krauf from CIPRI. Director General, you referred to this building of interest that you visited in Parchin, and apparently it was supposed to contain a large explosives chamber capable of containing an explosion of 70 kilograms or more. So if this chamber was cut up and it was removed, surely there must have been some satellite imagery that would have captured the trucks and the equipment, taking this equipment out. And I was wondering whether you could comment on that. Thank you. Starting from uh, the, uh, the first question, if um, uh, the measures are beyond the additional protocol or JCPOA measures contained in the JCPOA, uh, would be um, 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 applied uh, to other countries in the future. Or, or um, I would like to uh, uh, to, uh, to recall uh, that we have received the authorization uh, from the Board of Governors to implement uh, the measures 
contained in uh, the uh, JCPOA as an exception. Uh, this is an agreement between Iran and six, con con uh, six countries uh, under uh, special circumstances. Uh, we stated clearly uh, in uh, our report uh, that additional protocol uh, will, be, uh, will be implemented like in other countries. Uh, there'll be no, discrimin no discrimination, uh, no, uh, but there'll be no uh, special favor uh, in the implementation of additional protocol. Uh, for, with respect uh, to the transparency measures, um, uh, this is uh, the special agreement uh, 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 between Iran and six countries, and uh, we have received a specific authorization uh, from uh, the Board of Governors. Uh, there are some other um, uh, elements uh, that are um, um, uh, not standard, um, but uh, these are, uh, we are authorized to implement them um, um, based on uh, the clear, specific uh, authorization from uh, the Board of Governors. I cannot uh, prejudge uh, the future decisions of um, Board of um, Governors, uh, but um, uh, my understanding is very clear on this issue. These measures are Iran specific. And um, uh, JCPOA, uh, in JCPOA, five, six countries in Iran agreed. And uh, it was authorized by the Board of Governors um, um, uh, to implement it. Uh, these are the uh, legal framework, uh, these are the background, and uh, this is really an exception. Uh, for the uh, uh, next uh, question about uh, the, uh, the personal change, um, I said uh, that um, uh, um, starting from uh, September, uh, we started to see uh, changes and movements. Uh, we have been um, carefully observing uh, the, uh, the um, action or, or position of Iran. After um, uh, the change of um, our president, uh, we started to hear uh, different um, uh, rhetoric uh, and uh, different, um, uh, uh, different tones uh, from Tehran. Uh, we uh, received a message uh, from uh, Tehran uh, that Iran wishes uh, to have a better relation with uh, the international community. In summer uh, 2013, we started to see uh, the change of um, uh, staff uh, in charge of um, negotiations with us and with other countries. Um, uh, towards the end of September in October, uh, we saw uh, the um, a change of substance in the positions of Iran. Uh, um, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, focusing on these facts. When there were changes of rhetoric and words, um, uh, we, uh, we follow it carefully. Uh, when uh, there are changes of staff, um, uh, we follow. Uh, but they are not enough. They, they are not enough. When we see uh, the change in substance, that is uh, uh, the, uh, the real sign for us uh, to move uh, forward. And in this case, uh, there was a change of tone, change of staff, and a change of substance. Uh, this is how it developed. And um, uh, uh, we'll stick uh, to, um, uh, to the principle. We, uh, we do not speculate. Uh, we do not have um, um, uh, bias. We uh, focus on what happens on the ground. Um, for the, uh, the, uh, with respect to the questions related to the parting and absence or existence of a large chamber, um, the fact is that we have not seen it uh, when we visited. Uh, we have seen uh, the, uh, the uh, ongoing uh, alternation activities. We have taken samples and we are analyzing. And some, uh, uh, we are reviewing uh, the examination. This is uh, like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, we need uh, to, to analyze all the information that we have collected, not only related to this uh, at this time, uh, we um, analyze uh, the information that we got in the past um, uh, and now, and we analyze some other elements uh, that are 
uh, related, and we are undertaking a system assessment. Uh, it is not yet uh, time for us uh, to uh, pass a judgment. We are, uh, uh, this is an ongoing process. Ladies and gentlemen, it, it pains me to bring this to a close because not only are you asking questions, but given the quality and the experience and expertise of the people in the room, they're very high standard of questions. But perhaps we could give a little gift to Mr. Amano to, because you all have a very, not just a view, but a very considered view on the nuclear deal. Just by a show of hands, how many here in the room believe that this Iranian nuclear deal is going to succeed? Oh, that's very good. <laughs> <coughs> well, that's a bigger present than I thought. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Romano. There you, there, so the expectations are high, and as you continue to emphasize, you are the eyes and the ears of the international community. And I think we would all agree that in what is really a very politicized and a very sensitive agreement, your emphasis on the factual is very encouraging. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much.